Hey everyone, welcome back to another Papa Review. Today we'll be taking a look at their new 2020 Stygie Moloch. This little figure is the last of the 2020 Papos to be released. I ended up picking this figure up from Everything Dinosaur. It retails for just under $13 and I'll leave a link to Everything Dinosaur in the description if you'd like to order this figure for yourself. So getting back to this Stygie Moloch figure, uh, it's definitely not my favorite release from Papo. I do have a few issues with this figure, but I'll get into those a little bit later on in the review, but I'll give it to Papo for not taking the easy way out and just giving us a Jurassic World unofficial version. They seem to be getting away from copying the Jurassic franchise. And, you know, in 2020, there are a million companies just copying the Jurassic uh, franchise dinosaurs. So it's nice that Papo did not take the easy road and just give us the uh, Stygie from Jurassic World. So before we take a closer look at this figure, let's just do a couple quick measurements. This figure is just about three and a quarter inches tall to the top of that very long spike in the back of its head. And if you measure along the curve of the tail, this figure is just about five inches long. So Stygie Moloch, or a juvenile Pachycephalosaurus, is estimated to be about 9.8 feet long. So I'll put this figure somewhere in the 124 scale range. Moving on to the pose of this figure, uh, yay, a, another tripod from Papo. I, I really wish they just get away from this pose. Some of their tripod figures do work, but it does not work on this figure. It just looks awkward and weird. You know, Papo does a decent job of, you know, capturing a lifelike pose in plastic form, but I just really don't like the way this figure looks. If they were going to have to make this figure a tripod for balancing issues, I much prefer the figure be almost bipedal looking, maybe using one of its front hands to rest on the ground to give the figure the illusion that it was either walking or running. You know, when Papa first came around, a lot of the figures were sculpted in this pose and they kind of got away from it for a while. And it seems with this year, they're bringing it back. I just really, really hope this tripod pose just goes away someday. I just think it really takes away from the sculpts of these figures. Moving on to the paint scheme, this is my... Second complaint about this figure, uh, the paint scheme is this kind of bland and very flat looking. If you look at the prototype pictures, and yes, I know prototypes usually don't look as good as the finished product. The prototype had a nice dark wash over it that brought out a lot of that nice scale detail. And just since there's no dark wash over this, it just really looks bland and flat with this very... Uh, dark green and tan coloring that's going on with this figure. It's just uh, the head does have some nice uh, washes over it to bring out the details of the horns and the dome on its head. But the rest of the body is just very bland and flat looking to me. It almost looks like, you know, if you've been a long time Papo collector and you kind of follow the uh, dinosaur toy groups, a lot of people notice a huge difference from a first run production Papo figure to a second run production Papo figure. Usually the paint quality dips significantly and it does not look as nice as the first round figures and just the way this figure is painted it kind of reminds me of a second production run of this figure even though this is the first production run so it makes you wonder in the future of how bad this paint scheme is going to look when they go into a second production run of this figure all right so let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure the head sculpt is really nice on this sticky figure you got the dome sculpted in nicely you have some nice wash over here to bring out all that texture on the dome and all those very exaggerated uh, head spikes. These are a little bit longer than what the uh, fossil shows, but I do like that artistic liberty they did take with this. I think the spikes look really, really nice and they are very well painted. You got a lot of nice knobs and bumps along the top of the skull. The beak is painted very well. You got the nostril sculpted in right here. You got a little bit of a tongue poking out. And then you have some black paint around a yellow eyeball with a black pupil and they gave that pupil a very dear looking pupil which I do quite like the head like I said is really really well done love all the texture and mixing of colors on the head and then going down to the neck you can see some folds and wrinkles and some very light scale detail all the way along the body. Now, another problem I have with this figure, you know, if you are familiar with the anatomy of pachycephalosaurs, the ribs, the hips, and the tail base are way, way, way too narrow. They are not this skinny looking in real life. A little bit later on, when we get to the comparison video, I have a Draco Rex 
and Pachycephalosaurus figure that are sculpted correctly, and you'll see a huge difference in the body anatomy of this figure versus those other figures. Now, I know Papo is not meant to produce scientifically accurate figures, but just a tiny bit of research in sculpting this figure could have made a big difference in the anatomy. I just think this figure just looks way too skinny. And the same thing with these tripod poses. The legs are always awkwardly uh, splayed out. They're just like never uh, flush with the body for some reason. Uh, going down to the feet, the feet are nicely sculpted. You got some black paint for the uh, toe claws. Even the hands are well done. It has the correct number of digits. All those claws on the hands are painted in. The underside is a cream color and you have a little bit of like a peach uh, wash going over it. That does bring out some of the detail on the underside of this figure. And you do have a little bit of a cloaca slit right here. And then going to the back, you can just see how that green looks. It's very plain and matte. Like I said, it would definitely be improved by a nice dark wash to bring out all this nice scale detail on the figure. And then the tail just has some green and tan striping. And then the tip of the tail just ends in that green color. So yeah, um, definitely, definitely have a few problems with this figure if those aren't obvious already. All right, let's move on with some comparisons. Here are some other Pachycephalosaur figures from Safari Limited. Here is their 2020 Pachycephalosaurus. This is their Draco Rex, which is an older figure. So having these three figures next to each other, there is a lot of evidence that shows that Draco Rex and Stygimolic are just juvenile versions of Pachycephalosaurus. You know, the older the animal got, the more the dome on its head grew and those spikes would shrink into the skull and just give you those bony knobs along the side. So it was nice to have these three figures next to each other to show the growth stages of Pachycephalosaurus. Now, they're definitely not in scale with each other. The Draco Rex would be a lot smaller than the Stygi. Now, here's the anatomy part I just wanted to point out on the Stygi figure. We'll just use the Pachycephalosaurus. Uh, look how wide the rib cage, the hips, and the base of the tail are compared to the Papo version. I really wish they incorporated that anatomy into the figure. I think it would look a lot better. It just looks like a really, really skinny and malnourished dinosaur when compared to the wide body that Pachycephalosaurus had. So I just, like I said, just wish the sculptor just took a tiny bit of time just to research basic anatomy of the animals they are sculpting. And next up are some of the OG Papo models. Here is the legendary green stand and T-Rex in their original brown Velociraptor. And I gotta say, you know, for Jurassic Park clones, these figures have held up remarkably well over the years. And here it is with the limited edition Papo Spinosaurus. You can see how big this figure is next to this little Stygi Moloch. And lastly, here it is with the rest of the new figures from Papo this year. Here it is with the infamous Papo Giganotosaurus, the Chilesaurus, and the repaint of the Parasaurolophus. I will be doing a review of this figure relatively soon on the channel. So this is basically the Papo 2020 lineup. The only figure missing from this is the repaint of their feathered Velociraptor, which I won't be picking up. I was just a, never a fan of that figure, so I'm not going to waste that money on a figure that I do not like. So yeah, definitely a very interesting year for Papo. This you know figure right here took a lot of crap from the collecting community. I really, really enjoy their Chilesaurus. I think this is probably... Definitely the best of the bunch that came out this year. Um, I never had the original green Parasaurolophus when it came out years ago. I just didn't like the color scheme. I loved the sculpt. I just wasn't a fan of the color scheme. I just never, never picked it up. So I'm very happy they released a more colorful version. So I'm very happy to add that to my collection. So out of these four figures right here, I think I ranked the Stiggy below the Giganotosaurus. And I'm going to go, this is my number one for this year. This is my number two. I, I, I love the sculpting detail and the paintwork are great on it, especially when you compare it to this figure. You know, the Parasaurolophus is just another you know, Parasaurolophus. Every company has one. So yeah, the Stiggy is my least favorite Papo from their 2020 lineup. So yeah. <laughs> so final thoughts on this figure. If you can already tell, I'm just not super happy with it. I don't hate it, but uh, I think it could have been a lot better. 
you know, my couple issues are the anatomy, you know, the ribs, the hips, and the tail base are just way too narrow on here. The paint scheme is kind of bland, could have seriously used a dark wash over to bring out some of that scale detail, and I'm just not a fan of the tripod pose. I'm getting really tired of seeing it, you know, it was, you know, pretty much standard issue back in the day when the Carnegie collection was going strong, but, you know, dinosaur toy companies are getting better and better making bipedal figures, and Papo definitely has the capability of pulling those poses off. So I really, really want to see these tripod poses go away for good. But if you need a Stygy Moloch figure to display along your Draco Rex and Pachycephalosaurus to show the growth stage of Pachycephalosaurus, then yeah, I do kind of recommend picking this figure up. The skull anatomy on this figure is pretty good other than the main body anatomy. So right now this figure would do good in a pinch if you just want to display the anatomy of those figures. And like I said at the beginning of the review, I ended up picking this figure up from Everything Dinosaur Retails for just about $13. Link is in the description if you would like to order that figure from them. So that will pretty much do it for the review. I have a couple of uh, new Jurassic World stuff coming in this week. And in any couple more weeks, I hope you guys love Ceratopsians. I got the Wave 1 of Beast of the Mes Mesozoic figures coming in. They're supposed to be coming in somewhere around the beginning of November. So expect a ton of reviews on those once those comes in so as always if you're enjoying the content on this channel show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated and i'll see you guys for the next one